Good evening and welcome along to another uh, Thursday Night Live on SEFC Fan TV. Uh, tonight you got myself with Philly, uh, joined by uh, the Madden Stick. Terry, how's your day been? Yeah, it's been all right. Kind of complain. Usual four mile running. It's ready to chill out now. Uh, also, uh, joining us on the channel, we have uh, the return of Jack Shields. Jack's with us. Jack, how's your day been? <clears throat> Yeah, it's been all right. Finished work. Had a quick quick gym session. Now, looking forward to talking about my favourite team in the world, Sunday the AFC. Fantastic. And we have uh, a new member who's uh, helping us out with the channel this season. Uh, David Barker is joining us. David, how's your day been? Hi, mate. Yeah, quite good. Um, yeah, that was shift at work and then um, managed to get a quick pint in before I come home. Oh, there you go. Sounds like sounds like a perfect finish to the day. So uh, you can catch David as well. David will be doing uh, match reviews on the channel. Uh, he's already done one for the uh, the Coventry game, so you can uh, check those out as well. Uh, don't forget we are live, which means you can join us via the live chat if you wish to do so. Uh, already on there, first up as he normally is, the last part of the is there, David Walker. Uh, Thane, a uh, friend of the show, is there. Uh, we when Doran, who's uh, who helps out on the channel as well, uh, he's there. Hi to Cranky P, Yorkshire Mackham Series, uh, the Red and White Army podcast, which is uh, uh, Bradley. Uh, also, we've got to give a shout out to Reese at SEFC Fan TV. Reese, who's uh, part of the channel, he even says, uh, uh, Evening lads, another cracking uh, show in store. And uh, Reese has kindly donated one pound seventy nine. <laughs> Via the super chat. Uh, quick word on that: if you do want to donate money, uh, the channel doesn't make a profit, and it's all gratefully accepted. You can do it via the super chat. There's a little dollar sign at the bottom of the live chat. You just select that and decide how much you'd like to uh, donate, and that would be gratefully uh, accepted. Um, Emma is there, friend of the show. Evening, ladies. Ha ha ha. Um, right, okay. Um, we're going to start. Um, well, we're going to start with uh, uh, an issue which we didn't uh, we didn't actually bring up on uh, uh, on Sunday, um, and we're just wondering how many other people. <laughs> um, Terry, do you want to run a, run through with us with your season card? Oh yes. Um, on Sunday, my season card just didn't work. It was just red. It wouldn't go green. So luckily, I was in a fortunate situation. I had a friend who had a spare one to go in the Black Cats bar, so I managed to get in the Black Cats bar. But my season card just didn't work. So I've emailed the club since, twice. I think it was Monday and Tuesday, and I've heard nothing back so far. Um, so it's a bit of a shambles, to be fair, to be honest. I mean, I've got friends who... Uh, my friend and his three grandchildren, up until Friday, didn't have a season card because they've changed seats. They had to go down to the stadium of light and get some paper tickets until their cards come in the post. Um. Right, okay, so what we're doing, uh, basically, we'd like to put it out there. Um, has anybody else had the same problem with their season card uh, when they went to the game on Sunday? Let us know, because um, uh, I wasn't aware of it until I've just spoken to Terry there. But, uh, uh, Terry, you've said there, there have, you have heard of others who've, uh, who've had problems like that, yes? Yes, there's a few more as well, definitely. Uh, right, okie doke. Um, right, um We've got a new arrival that's come in this week, uh, Alexandro uh, Bertorini, head of goalkeeping. Um, is that a good move, or would we rather have seen sort of another goalie come in before uh, uh, before uh, an appointment like that? I think we already have Mark Prudo uh, there, don't we? Uh, Jack, uh, your thoughts on that? I think we do need a new goalkeeper. Um, definitely, I know we brought in the lad from... Um... Was it was a Portsmouth he, he was playing for? Uh, the, the lad that we brought in, I think he's, he's maybe going to be back up to, to Patterson or one way or the other, you know. But I think we're st certainly short in that area. But I think in terms of bringing staff in, it seems to have been quite a lot of reshuffling going on recently. You know, there's a few left, hasn't there? Dickman's left and one or two others, and there seems to have been a little bit of uh, a shuffling about going on. So, what that says for the stability, I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's something to do with the, the Alex Neil wanting more of his men in. Maybe he's having a say in that, I don't know. But, um, I'm being honest, I don't know that much about this this gentleman we've got in with head of goalkeeping, so I can't really comment on him too much. But it um, seems to be lots going on behind the scenes and we have to see how it goes because change isn't necessarily always a good thing. Do you know what I mean? So we'll have to see see how this <laughs> guy, guy goes. But we definitely need a goalkeeper to answer your initial question. I would say 
I wouldn't feel confident going into the season without a, another addition at least. Um, OK. I mean, for me, I, I, I worry, you know, uh, too many Chiefs, not enough Indians and stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, uh, really, they, they seem to want uh, something in place for uh, for everything, you know. Um, just very quickly, um, Clayton Edwards says uh, Chris Waters seems to be the only one uh, keeping things together uh, at the moment. Uh, people are saying about uh, an announcement at seven o'clock. Uh, I'm not sure what this, annou this announcement is supposed to be. Um, I think possibly something was put out on our Twitter and it just said, uh, tonight, 7 p.m., uh, which I'm assuming was just a, a plug in uh, that we are going to be doing the live show uh, at seven tonight. So uh, maybe a bit of uh, um, confusion uh, in that score. I'm not sure, but uh, but we'll uh, we'll try and avoid doing that again. Uh, David, uh, your thoughts on this uh, um, on this new man coming in? Um, if it's if it's Alex Neil's appointment, then for me it can only be a positive thing. I know managers and coaches they try and they try and keep with people that they know or they want to work with. Um, getting under the goalkeeper point, I do think we need a good another goalkeeper. I think a lot of championship clubs don't know they have three goalkeepers that um, they rotate with, especially in cup competitions. Um, but it's just you know who who we can bring in and um, what position he would. He would take in the club because I think Patterson's starting as the number one will be the number one. Alex Bass may be coming as the number two. Um, but if if he can work, you know, I know he worked with Leeds under twenty threes, I think um, that season. So he should have a good a good record with the with the young lads. Um, yeah, fair enough. I was, um, I mean, when I saw his age, he's thirty six. Uh, I did wonder if is this guy coming in. As sort of um, um, like some sort of coach, but like possibly a player coach, whereas he could have been like a third, a third goalie. I mean, at thirty six for a goalie, it's not necessarily, you know, you're not over the hill and finished. But um, reading into it, it didn't really, uh, didn't really look uh, like that. Uh, back to the chat just very quickly. Uh, Runaway Army podcast said the uh, the club is a joke. Uh, email is not even working. He's waited 15 days for a response back on uh, Sheffield United tickets. Um, yeah, I've had a, uh, a few people saying that about the email. Ethan SCFC said, uh, good luck getting a reply, Terry. Um, as we said, I think that side of the club is uh, pretty much a, pretty much a shambles at the moment, I think, uh, unfortunately. Um, Terry, uh, this new uh, head of goalkeeping, as he's uh, title is going to be, uh, your thoughts on that? Well, basically, it says he's a 36-year-old who arrives to the stadium alive following a three-year spell at Leeds United, during which he was part of Marcelo Bielsa's backroom staff that earned promotion to the Premier League before, obviously, the new guy came in last season. So he, he's already been there. He's getting a team promoted, and he's been in the Premier League. So for me, it's got to be a, it's got to, it's got to be something positive. I would have thought. A positive, it's got to be better than what we've already got this moment in time. So he clearly he's retired early at an early age and he's gone straight to Bielsa's backroom staff and been their, their goalkeeper and coach there for three years. And, and oh, they've done well. They're getting promoted to the Premier League. They're surviving the Premier League last season. So I can only see it as a positive news for me. I, I, think, I think it'll help Anthony Patterson and probably Bass as well. Uh, right. So you, um, you know, is a, is a goalkeeper. <clears throat> Something that we actually uh, that we that we need. You know At this I mean? moment in time, I don't think it's the it's the main thing I'm worried about. But I think if we could find somebody with a bit of experience who can come in and happy to sit on the bench, then fair enough. I haven't got a problem with that. But I think there's other positions we need to strengthen before the goalkeeping position. Well, I mean, I suppose uh, it depends how long they've been. Uh, <clears throat> they've had this in the pipeline. I suppose if it's something they've been looking that they've needed. And uh, and wanted, and all of a sudden it's become available. Then, you know, it, it could be that. But uh, how it looks from the outside, like you say, there's um, uh, there's other things need sort of sort of above that is is what I would say. Um, right, okay. Um, it's I noticed today that uh, Everton have uh, have offered and uh, Nathan Broadhead uh, a new contract. Um, Obviously, we was interested in signing him uh, on a permanent deal. <coughs> um, 
I mean, he could still he could still sign a new contract for Everton, and and then they could they could loan him out anyway. Um, is Nathan Broad Broadhead someone we we need now, or is he less important now that we've got Ellis Sims, uh, Terry? Yeah, I think it's less important now that we've got Ellis Sims. But has he really been offered a contract by Everton? Is that is is that do we know for sure? Because I've been talking to a couple of Everton. I was talking to a couple of Everton fans, and they were surprised I even mentioned it. Well, it's it's. Uh, I think the Echo have mentioned it and stuff like that. So it's uh, you know, I mean, that's all we can go on. We can't. Uh, um, I mean, if Broadhead was available and he wanted to come and he wanted to come at the right price, because I've heard rumours that it's the money situation that he's that's a sort of stumbling block, whether he wants extra money that we want to then we want to pay him. But um, yeah, I mean, it'd be I think it'd be a good addition because he can also play on the left hand side, which is he seems very 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 durable and versatile to play in different positions rather than just like having a strike out and out striker like probably like Sims and Stewart. Um, yeah, okay. Do you not think the club, though, as well, um, are going down this route of um, not necessarily buying <clears throat> players as well and would rather loan them? And uh, um, I mean, I do also think um, when we've signed somebody this year, it's all always been uh, undisclosed, which sort of is it's good and bad in a way. I suppose they don't want to show the hand to other clubs and say, oh, they've got all this money that they're willing to spend uh, in the championship, but also I think it's more likely that the club are doing that because the the fans will then say, well, "Why are you only spending this much money?" Come on, Terry. I mean, I've I've been told as well that Alex Neil wasn't too overly keen on purchasing them because he wasn't sure he'd get a full season out of them with his injury situation. So I think he was I think he was more happy to get Sims over Broadhead. I think I think the recruitment team wanted Broadhead in. But Alex Neil was probably had the final say and basically said he wanted somebody who thinks he'd get a full season out of, which is fair enough. Uh, right, OK. Uh, I'll come <clears> to, you, uh, to you two on the same question just now. Uh, uh, just very quickly, back to the chat. Thane says, uh, Bertorini uh, was at Leeds for three years and he's done well developing uh, their young French keeper. Uh, also, a bit further down, um, Karen, my wife says, has David got no lights in his house? Uh, I don't know. I think that's because he's uh, backlit. Uh, I think uh, it's why that's happened. Um, David, do you think um, uh, Broadhead would, would still be a good acquisition, even though we've got Ellis Sims now? Yeah, um, I think he still might come in on loan, even though he's start, well, potentially signing a new contract with Everton. Um, but yeah, I don't see why not. I think um, we're going to get to the point. I know there's a break this year because of the World Cup, but I think we're still going to get to the point where um, you know, we need to rotate the squad. We're going to have a few games. <clears throat> Obviously, not as many as previous seasons because of the, the proper trophy that will not be in this season. But in terms of the League Cup, the FA Cup, um, and then the games that's going to come thick and fast because of the World Cup. So we're going to have that a few more midweek games, I think. Um, so I don't see any harm definitely in, in bringing him in. And he offers something different for me to what Sims and Sh uh, Stewart does. Um, in terms he can play just behind the strikers or either side of them as well. Uh, right, okay. Um, just very quickly, um, back to the uh, back to the chat. Um, where we at? Safi Mackham says uh, Everton won't let Broadhead go till January with uh, Richardson uh, sold and Calvin Lewin out for six months. Uh, they want to keep him, so um, that's that's a fair point. Uh, Sirius says. Uh, Broadhead screams a deadline day signing. Uh, well, speaking of deadline day, we might as well chug it in there. We will, uh, no doubt again be uh, uh paying a visit to the uh, academy on deadline day because we can't see any of the Sky uh, Sky Sports team being down there. Down there. So, uh, the chances are, of course, it's not going to top uh, last time what you mean before. And if uh, if we know Sunland, they'll have um, they'll have security on this time, I would imagine, uh, keeping everybody else. Having said that, they might want to not want to pay the extra wages, so we don't know. So uh, uh, look out for that as well. Um, Jack, uh, Broadhead, how important is it for us to get him in now? Uh, bearing in mind, we, we do have Ellis Sims. Well, I think we, we definitely need one more striker. I think, um, 
you know, we've, we've got Sims in, but he, he didn't come off the bench at all, did he, on Sunday? I don't know what his fitness is like. That's something that's going to be needed to be built up. So I definitely think you need a third option. I agree with David when he says Broadhead is a different type of striker to Stuart to Sims. He can play anywhere across the front three. The runs that he makes is completely different. Um, but I'm a bit wary when you chase somebody for so long, regardless of whether it's Nathan Broadhead, Jermaine Defoe. We've seen it when it kind of the deals kind of take a while to get going. Will Grigg to a certain extent. Do you know what I mean? You, when you try and chase and you, you, you put all your eggs in one basket, I'm not saying we are doing this with Broadhead, but I think if a player wants to go and the club wanted to go and all parties involved are, are wanting the transfer, it should happen quickly. So there's some somewhere there's a stumbling block along the line. It's obvious we're interested in him. Somebody along the way, either it's Everton wanting to keep him, uh, wanting you know somebody else in before he goes, or whether or not it's Broadhead himself. Maybe he doesn't fancy it. Maybe he fancies another move somewhere, but... I'm always a bit wary of hanging on to somebody and chasing them and really, I wouldn't say begging, but you know what I mean, really pleading with somebody to come because I think you have to give you have to give somebody, I wouldn't say a deadline, but you know, give them time. And if, if they haven't signed by then, then look elsewhere, do you know what I mean? Because there are, there are probably other options we can look for. And I agree with Terry when he said the fitness issue with Broadhead, how many games we're going to get out of him. He's definitely injury prone, probably, you know, might be even a more physical league in the, in, 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 physical games in the championship. So I would certainly wouldn't be Holding our hopes on to um, pinning our hopes on to Broadhead too much. I think there are other options available. Um, yeah, um, I quickly want to go back to the chat. Uh, before I do, um, we've got just over a hundred people on the uh, on the stream watching at the moment. We've got twenty nine likes. We'd like to try and hit hundred likes if we can, uh, as we normally do uh, on a Thursday. So we can just hit the thumbs up. We'll take you a second to do that um, if you're watching on a mobile device and you have the live chat open. Close the live chat, you'll see the thumbs up there. Uh, just smash that for us and let's get those numbers up. And uh, equally, if you're watching and you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, free to subscribe. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and that helps uh, the channel out also. Uh, back to the chat, uh, DJ Sizzler Watson, friend of the show down here, says, our friends in China, DH Gate uh, on Sky Sports News today, say we paid $10 million for Clark. Um, do you think that's likely, Terry? You, you're muted, Terry. I think eventually, like, like everybody knows, eventually it'll probably go between seven and ten million if we get promoted to the Premier League. I think at the moment it wasn't ten million. I don't think I don't think any way. There's no way in the world they're going to pay ten million for Clark up front. You know how they, they won't even open the club shop, man. Never mind. <laughs> they're going to pay ten million for Clark up front, so probably two or three million. And then it might rise with certain sort of tick certain boxes, I would have thought. Yeah, I find it I find it hard to believe that it would be 10 million and uh, purely uh, on going on what you say. Like <clears throat> you, say you know, the penny, penny pinch on the club shop. Uh, Jack? I was just going to say, um, it wouldn't surprise us if Tottenham have put something in the clause whereby it's appearances or it's like incentive Maybe. based upon instalments because... Tottenham are a notoriously difficult team to deal with. Anytime you want to play from Tottenham, they're always difficult to, to get players from. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's something in, like Terry says, whereby it's maybe two million up front, and then another two million if he makes 100 appearances, another two million if someone gets promoted. And I think 10 million is probably still too much. I don't think it'll be that much in total, maybe seven, something like that. Yeah, I think uh, Daniel Levy is, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a hard taskmaster. Um, uh, David, uh, do you think it's possible that uh, uh, that we could be paying ten million for Clark? No, again, just what Jack said there. I think there will be a few add-ons in that. Obviously, a promotion to the Premier League. Um, if he makes so many appearances, few goals, um, I think he'll add a couple of million on. But I fancy it to ten million. Um, maybe he's a realistic target somewhere between five and seven. Uh, great. Um, just very quickly, I see Ben Allison has become a member. Uh, you can also uh, donate to the channel by becoming a member if you uh, uh, would like to help the channel out. It's uh, it's less than 50p a week, and you can sign up and do that. You get your special members badge, and uh, you will get access to some uh, members only material uh, as well. Um, we was uh, just talking uh, off air just before we came on again about the um, about the incident at Coventry with the uh, uh, the bottle throwing, and I we said how easy um, it could be solved by just putting <coughs> on there. Uh, not massively expensive, I would imagine, and uh, a quick fix which would work. 
And uh, Terry told us that um, uh, he'd had one of his uh, viewers had uh, messaged him. Uh, and uh, what, what had he said, Terry? I'll read it out now. Just give us a second. I've got to find it first. It's on uh, here. Right, I'm not going to say who it was. I'm just saying we're going to read up the comment of what it was. So, basically, this guy sits in the North Stand. After Sunday, he wrote an email to SFC Health and Safety Department complaining about the incident. He received a phone call from the SFC, SFC reassuring him that they will be dealing with it. The health and safety representative said he told the club back in 2018 to put nets up, but the club said no. He said they are going to put stewards in the back row of the away fans in the future to prevent further incidents and give more training to stewards searching away fans. He's watched CCTV from Sunday and has seen the stewards were not searching fans correctly. He seemed to be a nice bloke. I don't think the club is taking health and safety seriously. Only time will tell. So there we go. That's what's the comment I've gotten. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't like to see it again, but I think anything that costs money, um, the club just don't want to deal with, no matter how, uh, um, you know, how little the cost is. Um, but bear in mind, I mean, that somebody could uh, get seriously injured. And like you said, Terry, before we come on, you know, the chances are the way for an incident to happen where it, it's a serious incident and then uh, they'll react, um, which is too late, really. Go on, Terry. I mean, I never saw any bottles that were actually thrown on Sunday, but it doesn't take, you know, at some great height, anything with any kind of weight or sharpness hits someone on the head. It could have a very serious accident. You got, you know, you've got young kids there, families there, so when they enjoy a game of football, and they've got things flying over the top of them. So it's not every single club, and it's not, you know, it's just a total. It's just like one percent of the of, of one or two fan bases, but it just takes that that one percent. They could even kill somebody. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't get to that. Um, and the welfare of the fans, the welfare of fans should outweigh a little bit of cost of netting. Serious, simple, as simple as. Absolutely. I just can't see the cost of netting being that significant. I mean, if they owned the club shop up all week and sold an extra <coughs> some extra shirts, I'm sure that would uh, more than pay for the cost of a, uh, of some netting, Terry. Well, we'll talk about the club shop shortly because they ran out of shirts halfway through Saturday. Well, well, we're going to wait. Don't worry, we'll get uh, we'll get on to it again as per. Uh, but before uh, we do do that. Um, it's back in the news again about uh, safe standing areas, uh, which was passed as a um, uh, as a possibility. Hang on, just let me uh, knock this branding off because we've uh, uh, we've lost. Uh, not that off for now. Um, yeah, the old um, safe standing has uh, reared its head again. Um, First of all, I, I just ask you, I'll start with you, Jack. Is this something you'd like to see at the Stadium of Light? Absolutely, Phil. Uh, I think if it's done correctly and implemented in the right way, I think it can be It can be a success. No doubt you have to make sure that the safety element is there first. A, a paramount, as always, we've seen issues with, you know, going back to the 80s, but, uh, you know, when you think of Hillsborough and, and, and standing and things like that, and you obviously don't want to have that sort of situation develop again but I think I don't know about where other people sit or you know where people sit in this, uh, <laughs> in this chat, but where I sit in the southwest corner I actually stand most of the game anyway so um, I know you could say well technically you're breaking the rules and I get that but I think as long as the, the atmosphere and, and the crowd do it you know the right way I think it can be a success and I think the atmosphere is better I think it makes it easier to chant and, and create a, a good atmosphere when you're standing compared to sitting um, and I don't think, obviously, you, you couldn't have standing all across the stadium. I like absolutely not. But I think there is the right area for it. I think if, if we were to do it at the stadium, I would certainly certainly be behind it. I think as long as it's done correctly and, of course, the safety element's done the right way, could we make it kind of whereby it, 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 there's the option there if you want to stand in certain areas, but there's a, a seat there if you do want to sit. I don't know if that's going to be kind of something we can physically physically do with the way that the stadium's uh, set up. But uh I think if it's done correctly, I think you'll only see the atmosphere improve. I'm a big, big fan of it. Well, the um, the way I see it, and I, I think the only way they can do it anyway, is um, I've been to um, the Olympic Stadium in Munich 
and they have a standing area. And what it is, is you have your seating still. And it is, a, if you if you think the back of your seat, there's actually a barrier goes up behind. So what you do is you would stand up and you would lean on the barrier of, of the one in front. So you can't actually uh, stand and sit, uh, but it, that becomes sort of the standing area. And that's... Uh, that's, what, that's what I mean, Phil. So I think if it can be done that way, I don't know what stadium, how the stadium would like, would need to be adapted to do that. Obviously, that's not for me to decide, but I think if it's done the right way, I think it could be a real success. Yeah, I don't... I don't see it being done any other way I, I don't think but I mean <clears throat> that, that's just my uh, stance on it uh, just very quickly Jason Ashman uh, says he sits in the east stand and he saw an object of some size thrown uh, from the away end um, uh, also the Las Palmas Macam I'll just bring David back in here now uh, Las Palmas Macam uh, says uh, police and stewards are not allowed to search under 16s so every team can smuggle uh, flares and objects. Um, so I don't know how true that is. Um, uh, Terry, you was one in there? Yeah, one of the flares that were thrown down from the Coventry fans actually hit an old age pensioner on the on the arm. Then they picked it up and chucked it on the pitch away from the fans before the smoke started getting everybody's faces and everything. But um, apparently Coventry fans came up the channel and also said they identified, the fans identified the youngster who did this and they reported that the youngster to the police and he was soon escorted away. So I hope that was the only incident, but we don't know. I don't know. I, per, I personally don't know. I never saw anything else apart from the flare. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, David, <coughs> uh, we're just talking about uh, safe standing. Uh, if they if they did that at the stadium alight, was it something you would want to see? I think it um, creates a better atmosphere. Um, you have, especially your way fans, and when we go away, you have a lot of people standing. Um, you know, and it and it, it does create a better atmosphere. And um, so I don't see why not. You know, I've been a lower league teams that's that's had it in like Hartlepool and a few other teams, and it's you know it hasn't been a problem. It hasn't been a problem there. Um. Yeah, I would. I mean, for me, you know, I'm I'm old now, so I prefer to sit down. And uh, and I mean, it, it bugs our lass if we're if we're in an away game. You know, everybody stands up in an away game. And all she'll say through the game is, we paid for a seat. Why have we paid for a seat when we have to stand up? Um, I think, for me, I think it would be a good thing to have it. But you're going to have to get all you ones what want to sing in that standing area. And uh, and that's what it becomes. Uh, because I do think that's... Um, um, I do think the atmosphere... I think the, the stadium lights lost a bit of atmosphere... Uh, over recent years, myself. Uh, Terry, something you'd like to see? <clears throat> I think it's a great idea in principle. And I think as long as it's well advertised before the end of probably the end of the season, before the new season starts, the in between so people can actually purchase the seats in the right place. The idea of what you said with the barrier in front and being able to sit and stand it, I think that's a great idea. But again, at this moment in time under the current regime, they are not going to spend that kind of cash to sort that out. Simple as. Like I said before, they won't even open the pie shop, never mind flip and get the, change all the seating areas around and put metal, install metal bars and this, that and the other. Come on, it's not going to happen until this till, till we get somebody who can actually spend some cash or, or wants to spend some cash. Well, uh, yeah, spot on. I mean, it, it's not something that is going to happen uh, because... Uh, at uh, the price what's been banded around uh, to do that, uh, the club writing it, it'll cost about a million pounds to do. Now, bearing, bearing that in mind, um, if the club did have a million pounds to spend, um, would you um, be happy to see it go on, on safe standing or would you rather it go towards another player? Terry? I'd personally have the nets up first and then do safe standing. And obviously, if they can afford to do the nets and they can afford to do the safe standing, they certainly can afford to do some uh, buy another player. I mean, you know, for me, the netting is going to cost. I'd be surprised if it was even a, a couple of thousand pounds. You know what I mean? It's like it's net, you know, <clears throat> netting, and then you can you can have it put up yourself. You got employees, or even if you have to hire a cherry picker or something like that, it's not, you know. It cannot be that expensive. Um, uh, Jack, if it was to cost a million, uh, would you rather go on a player? Would you Would you still be keen for them to spend it then on, on something like the safe standard? 
I'm going to be greedy and I'm going to say I want both. <laughs> million on the million on the standard and million on the player. No, I mean, I, I understand. Look, listen, I, I'm a great, a great advocate of safe standard. <laughs> I think if it's done correctly, the atmosphere will be great and it'll be done. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're looking at it this way, most people, well, I don't know most people at the stadium, right? most people in the end that I'm in, the South West Corner and South Stand, stand up anyway. So you'd far rather have a section where it's actually designed to, to enable standing than people standing in a seating area. Do you know what I mean? If they're going to stand, you might as well create and adapt it so that it's better for them doing that and safer for them doing that than standing in the seating area. Um, would I rather spend it on the player? Probably. I think it's it's not the, the, the highest of priorities at the minute. I think, you know, strengthening the squad um, is probably more of a... So if, if you had to put a gun to my head and say, which one would you rather do? I'd probably rather spend it on the player. But uh, like you say, I'd be greedy and, and hopefully look for both. But in the future, that might be something we can do as well as. Uh, right, OK. Uh, go on, Terry. Yeah, going back to the netting situation, does anybody actually know how many CCTV cameras are? Is there, is there any good CCTV cameras right above the weir section? I imagine there'd be more cameras above the away section than anywhere else. How but because it was quality. But the thing is, Terry, when, when the stadium light was built, the away end was the south stand and the southwest corner, wasn't it? So I, I, I was informed, I might be wrong, I was informed that the whole, the police area and everything was all kind of structured so it was set up that the away end was in that south stand and southwest corner as it was for many years. For 15 years at the start of the stadium open. Now we, we moved them up to there. And I don't know if the facilities up there are catered for the away supporters to be up there. Do you know what I mean? I'm not sure somebody in the chat might know more than I do, but that's what I was always under the impression. Yeah, fair point. I mean, the police can. I mean, we see, we see, you need to have the net and obviously improve the CCTV up there as well so you can find the perpetrator, simple as. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, um, yeah, the police control room and everything's down there. Um, down that end, so uh, that's that's a fair point, that Jack. Um, just take quickly you're back, um, back on the chat. Alan Taylor says, Simple solution to fans behaving badly is to deduct points, uh, league points from their team. Um, that's not going to happen, and uh, you know, we're not without uh, our own, you know, group of fans like that anyway. Every, every team has them, so um. Thane is going on to uh, the team saying Roberts has to start on Saturday. Nothing against Embo, but personally, I didn't think he uh, did anything against Coventry. <laughs> uh, I know, uh, Maven says under 16s can get searched. Uh, I did when I was 15 uh, last season at Plymouth. Uh, Emma, friend of the show, also says uh, everyone, a bit like what you were saying, uh, Jack, there, everyone in the Rock Run stands, anyways. So easy place to put it and uh, can move family um, family bit to one of the other corners away from it. Um, so, uh, David, welcome back. Obviously, you're having problems with your, uh, uh, your connection there. Um, right, I'm going to go on to, uh, again, like a stuck record about this club shop, but it is really, really uh, peeing me off now. Uh, do you want to start us off then, Terry? Because you were telling us about uh, uh, running out of... Uh, of um... right. Just basically, when I, I was showing photographs of the car park on Friday afternoon and, and the fans were sort of three, four hundred yards around the car park queuing to get into the club shop. Queuing, they simply queuing to get in the club shop so they could buy the away shirt. So imagine if this club shop had been open Monday to Friday, you wouldn't have all this farcical standing around for hours in, in, in the car park. And you wouldn't, of course, run out of shirts. I mean, how can, a, how can you advertise a shirt being up for sale then not have the shirt for, available for sale? Running out after one and a half days, it's kind of pathetic, to be fair, isn't it? It's, it's, it's badly right. organised all over. Right, well, um, I mean, I'm seething about it because I, I purposely didn't order it online. Uh, we, we did this thing about, you know, the waste <clears throat> was released on the Monday, and I said, well, there'll be no member of the public wearing that on, on the Monday it's released because you can only buy it online. So I didn't, and I thought, I'll wait until Friday. And I went down on Friday morning. Queue was massive. Came away, I thought, I'm not waiting on that. I went back a bit later on. Still a massive queue. Didn't bother waiting on that. I said, right, I'll go back Saturday. I went Saturday morning. Uh, there was a queue again Saturday morning. I thought, I'm going to wait. So I went back Saturday afternoon. No queue. I thought, get in. In I go. No shirts left at all. So um, there's no shirts <laughs> And this is home and away, right? There are no home and away shirts available online, right? They've all gone, right? So the chance of there being any shirts in that club shop tomorrow 
when they open again tomorrow morning at 10, you know, it's, it's highly unlikely. Um, what I want to ask is, should the club shop not have looked back at, say, last year's sales, certainly on the home top? Uh, I think the away top's the best it's been for many years, so I can understand, you know, that that being more sales. But they've sold out of everything. Uh, Jack? Should they not have looked at last year's sales on the home strip and gone, right, this is this tends to be what we sell. We need to have at least that many. Yeah, it would make make more sense. You'd far rather have more in than not enough, even if they'd ordered three times as many as you need. You know what I mean? You'd far rather have too much stock than not enough. Do you know what I mean? And then you can, you know, you might get it sold later on in the season as uh, as the games come thick and fast and people are coming back to the game. So I think I'm, I guess I've, I've got it on. Mine was a present bought to me by my uh, my dearest mother, who's also a season ticket holder at Sunderland. So she got mine delivered online. So that's how she I've, I've got mine. But um, <laughs> I think I think in terms of, you know, not just the kit itself, like it just smacks of the small time club as we have been in the last few years. There hasn't been much professionalism with Sunderland off, off the pitch with instance like this, the ticket office, as we've spoken about numerous times on this uh, on this chat, Phil, you know what I mean. It's it's just like it. It's not hugely professional, and I always look at a club and think, no, it's not so much now where you are, where you'd look to go, where where you're looking to go as a club. And we ultimately want to get back to the Premier League, don't we? Every Sunderland fan thinks we belong in the Premier League, and that's where we should be. Our long term goal should be there. But it's little things like that. I know we've been a League One club for the last four or five years, but you know, it's little things like that that just you know don't look good. You know what I mean? In terms of an ambitious big club and where we're going, even small things like running out of kits, it just doesn't come across well to the supporters. Well, people are saying, you know, it's 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 there's there's non-league clubs that run better, and um, and it, it it is it's ridiculous. I know what you're saying, uh, Jack. You know, they should have three times as many shirts. I mean, I thought, um, I mean, it happened to me with the home strip. I went down the first week to get the home strip, and it, they ended up selling out, and I had to wait until the following week. And I was saying, why haven't they got boxes and boxes out the back? You know, to just keep bringing it, keep replenishing that. Uh, and selling them. And the simple fact is, is because we are penny pinching, the club is scared stiff of being left with excess shirts that they paid for and they can't sell. Now, I understand that if it's after Christmas, but surely all the way right up until Christmas, you get massive shirt sales. Uh, you, you better do that. Um, over you, David, um, should the club shop be looking back over previous years at sales? You know, because they're, they're probably going to be pretty much the same, these shirt sales. Should they not be doing things like that? They should be, yeah. In, in fact, when you're moving up the divisions, you're probably going to sell more, aren't you? But I'm sure I read somewhere um, end of last week where there is um, a problem with every club on shirts. Um, I think there's some there's some teams that haven't even got the away kit or the home kit on sale yet because there's a problem with it. So I don't know if it's... Because of that, why we haven't got many on sale, or if it's just the club is penny pinching to try and to try and save some money. Well, I mean, there's somebody put in here about uh, I can't find it now, but the Burnley shirt. Uh, uh, David Kay says uh, Burnley away kit not getting released until the end of the month. I've not got a problem with that. It's what I've got a problem with is when it gets released. You know that you know, it gets released and the club shops are not even open. I mean, it's just, it's just the false economy. It's absolutely silly to think that they're saving money by not paying wages on in the club shop. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, Terry, is, there, is this a, a, a mad mistake by the club not, um, not looking back on previous sales? I mean, who's in charge uh, of the club at this moment in time and, and sales? I mean, it, it's not rocket science. You look back on last year's sales, you see what you sold. You, you should have like some idea of seeing what you sold in the first two or three weeks, never mind what you sold in the full year. And as you get promoted to the championship, you're going you're gonna to get more sales, simple as people are screaming out for them. So for whoever's in charge, that one's a good slap in the first place. Then we got the online situation. I ordered mine online on Monday lunchtime. It arrived by Wednesday lunchtime, Wednesday lunchtime. So that was pretty efficient. I ordered the weird one that was delivered within 48 hours. That was very efficient. But you're paying £10 more for ordering online that you would in the shop. You know, that's, that's, that's what happens. You pay for your postage and you don't get a 10% discount if you have a season card. So it's way better online than the club shop. But it's incompetence. It's either incompetence or absolute stupidity or they just don't care about the fans. One of those three because 
the fans obviously queuing outside. It could be could have been raining all day. Could have been chucking it down all day, and they wouldn't be bothered. These fans are going to get wet outside, waiting around in this club shop for this, you know, for for, for to buy a shirt. When if it had been open Monday morning, not everyone's going to turn up Monday morning. They know they're going to be open all week. They're going to pop in Monday, pop in Tuesday, pop in Wednesday, and they should have the sales of last year to have the right amount in the shop, even if it's just the sales for the first week. You know, I mean, if you sold so many in the first two weeks of last season, you're going to sell the same again this season. So why not order the same amount or just slightly over? It's seriously, it's pathetic the way this club's being run at the moment. And, and KLD is supposed to be some sort of millionaire and I just don't get what's going on at the club at this moment in time. It just It's like, like chalk and cheese. This guy is supposed to be wanting to do well for the club, getting the club up in the Premier League. But on the other side, the PR side of things, it's pathetic. It's, it's like we're like sort of, I mean, a spending of a club gets run better than this. Their club shop's open. They've got the home strip out. They don't run out. They've got other, you've got Grimsby, you've got Carlisle. Their shop's open five days a week. And we're in the championship for God's sake, man. The thing is, what, what doesn't make sense to me is for a club that values money so much and, and wants to be careful with every penny <clears throat> uh, that, you know, these these are supposed to be businessmen and it's just it's just simple business now to, you know, to think that saving on wages by not opening the, sh- the shop, you know, will be will will be less <clears throat> Will, will cost them less than actually opening it and selling shirts. It's ridiculous. You know, a club that wants to make as much money as they can and making it hard to uh, uh, for fans to give the money to them. Uh, just very quickly, back uh, on David Joblin on the chat says, the biggest disappointment is the phones uh, not being manned at the ticket office, uh, which is another annoyance. Um, one more thing on the club shop, um, what I want to say, and I wouldn't normally uh, advocate this, um, but, you know, I've had my 50 quid there waiting to give to the club shop for the last couple of weeks now to, to get this away strip. I would love this away top, right? Um, I am seriously, seriously thinking uh, ordering it from the Chinese market, you know, where you can get them for 15 quid or whatever. And I would never advocate that. I would normally say, give your money to the club. At least, you know, it can be invested back in. Um but I'm just thinking I could order it from China and probably still get it before I'll get it from the club. And it's not something I would want to do, but there's my 50 quid that the club may not get. And many other people might do that. You know, it's just um, it's, it's just ridiculous. Um, so whether I do that or not, I don't know, but I will, uh, I'll keep you informed on it. Uh, anyway, on to, um, on to Saturday. Um, started with a draw. Um, at the beginning of the week, uh, we're away to Bristol City. Um, they start with a 2-1 defeat at Hull uh, last Saturday. Um, is Bristol City that one of the teams um, we should be expecting <coughs> to be uh, in this league? Uh, David? Um, we should be definitely competing with them. I don't see why You know, we should be going there for you in anything or going there set up defensively. I think it'll be a good test, and I think it'll show probably where where we want to be, um, where we, you know, where we're going to finish in the end. But I don't see any reason why we should be going to Bristol City and and fearing them. We should be going there and you know expecting expecting to come, come away with a good result. Um, right. Um, just very quickly back to the chat there. Uh, Ian Barron, who's our Darlington fan, who's uh, regularly on the channel, says uh, he said this in previous streams. A uh, club the size of Sunderland should have a club shop in the city centre. Uh, Darlington Football Club have got a club in their in their city centre, um, and uh, they're just a fan-owned National League North club. So uh, there you go. It's, it's, it's stuff we said before. Uh, Jack, um, Bristol City are they one of the teams that we we should be expecting to beat in this league? I wouldn't say expecting to beat Phil. I think you, you go on dangerous territory. We have to remember, as big as a club we are, we we are still. This is still our first our season, our first season back in in the championship. So um, I don't see. I agree with David. I don't see any reason why we go there favouring them. It's not like they're, they're going to be one of the favourites, and certainly not setting up defensively. But um, particularly away from home, I wouldn't be going to too many away games this season, confident of getting the three points because it's a competitive league at the end of the day, and it's going to take us time to build our our. Our levels up to to this, um, build ourselves up to this level. So I think we need to 
get things into perspective a little bit. I think we, we drew last week at home, solid draw. Uh, Bristol City, I've looked at them last season. I think they were 17th in the league last season. I think they're among the favourites for, for relegation, actually. But um, I, I think they were... I think they were leading at Hull a lot of the game. It was a bit of a controversial late goal somehow went in. I think it was a penalty given against them or something. So they may be a bit, a bit unfortunate to lose uh, last weekend. And they're going to want to see, they're going to see this as newly promoted team at home. This is a chance to kickstart our season. So I think if we can weather the initial storm, the first 15 or 20 minutes and build into the game, then I think we've got a good chance to get a decent result. But I have a feeling they're going to come flying out the traps like the same way as we did last week because this is their first home game, isn't it? And, like you say, the loss last week. So I think we might have to ease our, you know, sorry, you know, come into this game slowly and really take our time to build into the game because it might be more difficult than one or two were expecting. Um, yeah, I, I'd like, I would imagine they won't be thinking um, it's going to be easy. I mean, Dale, as, as you know, it's never a good time to play a, a newly promoted team right at the start of the season. Um, and that's what we are. We are that newly promoted team. Uh, I must admit, for me, uh, I see Bristol City as one of those teams that, um, you know, that we should be looking to uh, uh, to beat. I, I don't see them. Well, I don't want to tempt fate. Uh, uh, just very quickly on the chat before I go to you, uh, Terry. Uh, Last Palmer Smackham says DHK seem to have plenty. Uh, Terry says <laughs> Ireland have plenty in stock. And this is what I mean. You know, you you this club could be pushing. Um, fans to that to that market to uh, to obtain them. Uh, Terry, Bristol City, are they a team we should be expected to beat? <laughs> I would feel that's a bit of a joke, and I was expecting to beat the team in the championship. Should yeah. I mean, we kind of be ex- we kind of be expecting to win any games? Really, to be honest, we have to go in there and try and win a game of football. We have to go and do our best. Alex Neal's going to put a team out there that it can compete. And obviously, you know, we want to win a game of football, but going into a game expecting to win a game of football, like like um, Mr. Jack Shields said, you're, you're treading on dangerous water there, like definitely. Oh, I, 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 I think the likes of Andrus Weiman, he scored 20 goals, 22 goals last season, 10 assists. They got Chris Martin, the ex Derby player. I think they've got decent players. You know, we, we've got to go there for me and take the game exactly what we did against Coventry. We've got to go there and, and do the high press and try and get in the faces and try and last the 45 minutes this weekend rather than just the 40 minutes. And I think it's there. To, it's a winnable game, no doubt about it. It's a winnable game, but it's the difference between a winnable game and, and going in to try and compete and try and win a game of football to go in and say, right, I expect this game, expect to win this game of football. It's, it's different altogether. Um, right, OK. See, for me, though, I think there's, I think there's certain teams uh, in the championship where I would say... <laughs> I think if we go there and manage to get a draw, that's a fantastic result. I just see Bristol City as one of those teams that I would like to think that we're going to be going there saying, right, we want to try and get three points off these. Uh, Terry, was one back in. Yeah, Phil, you probably remember this. When was the last time Sunderland actually beat Bristol City? Um, I'll tell you what I do remember. Uh, Bristan Bull, uh, which was when we was 3-0, 3-0 down at half-time. And uh, we came back to uh, uh, to draw three three. We were three nil um, down with seventy minutes gone. And we I came back to draw three three. I can't believe he's just said Bristol Bull. I can't believe no, you can't call it. Come did on, come on. 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 A long time ago. Um, right, OK. We beat everybody uh, well, that season, to be fair, didn't we? we I think we, we pretty much beat everybody that year, didn't we? When we won 105 <laughs> points. Was it 105 points? <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That was, uh, that, was that season. Um, uh, right, OK. Um, so in that case, then, I mean, I, I'm going on what you said. Oh, before we do this, uh, we've got 66 uh, likes, so we just need another... Uh, uh, well, another 34 on that. If you can just smash that thumbs up for us, that would uh, get us to the magic 100 uh, we like to hit on a Thursday night. Uh, don't forget, if you are watching on a mobile device and the live chat is open, uh, close that, you'll see the thumbs up. Just smash that. Let's get these numbers uh, up there. And if you've not subscribed to the channel, it's free to subscribe. Please hit the subscribe button. It'll take you a second, and that helps us out also. Um, okay, then, should we um, should we be going to attack... Uh, Bristol City, or is it a case of sitting back and trying to hit them on the break? 
Um, Jack, do you want to start us off with that? No, no, I, I don't. It's a bit difficult. I wouldn't say go there you know, too defensively. Obviously, it's away, it's away from home, so you have to be a little bit more cautious than you would be in a home game, absolutely. I just have a feeling that Bristol City are going to come flying out the traps. Like you say, they lost late last week. It's their first home game of the season. There's always a bit of a good atmosphere in your first home game of the season, as there was with us last year, last week, sorry. Um, and I think we're just going to have to, you know, be careful the first 20, 30 minutes. I think if we can, you know, build and see that out and get on the ball, uh, as Terry's touched on when they're on the ball, press them high up. The thing I noticed, I thought on Sunday, we, our energy dipped a little bit. I thought that the intensity of the game was so high that it got to about 60 minutes, 65 minutes on Sunday and one or two of ours were flagging. So maybe with that, you know, that game being, you know, in our legs and, you know, some some decent training and we might be a bit be able to cope a little bit more on Saturday with the intensity of the game because that's one thing I noticed and we have to remember that this is our first game back at this level for sort of four or five seasons, isn't it? So we've been used to League One having a lot of the ball and, and dominating games and I don't think we're going to be able to do that as much. So um, I think we've just got to be careful, press them high up, try and keep the game as intense as we can and energy into it and if we can nick a goal on the counter and defend well, every chance we could get a good positive result. Uh, okay, um, David Jones uh, on the chat says, uh, get it from JJB Sports, Philly, at least you'll get one. Uh, I don't think JJB Sports is even a thing anymore, is it? I don't think they uh, exist any longer. Bob Bass says, I'm a season ticket holder. I live in Kent. All my dealings are done online. Uh, whether the club shop is open or closed is irrelevant to me. Concentrate on team affairs. Maybe irrelevant to you, but there's a lot of people it is relevant to. And uh, what I've got to say, Bob, is um, the way the online things are going as well. You know, I hope you don't have to uh, be dealing with the ticket office too often because at the moment uh, the phones are not manned. Uh, you send emails, emails are not replied to. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of uh, things going on which, um, which are not good for a club uh, this size, really. Uh, David, should we attack them? Or do we need to sit back and just hit them on the break? I think we need to stay in the game. First and foremost, I think, uh, you know, the first 20 minutes is going to be important because I think they're going to come at us and, and attack us like, you know, you do in your home games. Like Jack said, your first home game of the season, you're going to be up for it. You're going to have the crowd behind you. Um, so I think the first 20 minutes is going to be difficult if we can sit back and hold on. Um, and then from there, maybe push forward, try and hit them on the counter attack. But, you know, like I said in my last answer, there's no reason why we really we should be we should be going there and favouring them. We shouldn't be really going there and sitting back. Um, but we need to be we need to be careful when they do come forward. Last week, um, I think our back line played well. So I'm confident that we can keep them out. Um and Patterson, you know, I think you made it did Patterson tip it under the bar last week or did it just hit the yes. bar? We made a really good yeah. save, I think, last week. So I think once it you know, once it does get past the back line and Patterson's calling into action, I'm confident he can um you know, he can keep them out, but no, I definitely wouldn't be going there to sit back. Uh, okay. Um, Thane on the chat says, uh, Bristol City didn't deserve to lose against a whole, a very controversial penalty ruined the game. Uh, Tony Lee says, a victory on Saturday, no problem. John S says, <clears throat> Bristol not improved, uh, so should be winning this. Um, Sirius says, as long as we don't lose, it's a good result. Uh, DJ says, Watson says, uh, this is a fair point, this as well. If the club shop is open, people would buy uh, more than a shirt. So all this online stuff, you go on and you buy your shirt. And that. when you are in the club shop, there is a chance that you could pick something else up as well. So, you know, another uh, another way of getting extra funds into the club. Terry, do we need to sit back or do, or do, we, uh, do we just attack them? I'd play exactly the same as you did against uh, Coventry, like I said. I said, if you don't want to be sitting back and just defending for the match day. I mean, let's face it, you're inviting trouble to do that. And never mind the counter attack sort of thing. I'd just do the same as we did against Coventry. I think the high press, I think, keep the ball, keep the ball better than we did against Coventry in the second half, mind. But I mean, like, like Alex Neil said, the, the team has loads of improvement in them. I don't think we had a very good pre season. I think the team still got a 10%, 15% fitness to gain from last match to probably this match or the next match. So I think we, we can improve again. And if we can keep that kind of high press and that intensity going, we've got five substitutes we can use as well now in this league, apparently. We didn't really use that many at the weekend. I think, was it only two? Possibly two? Or I'm not sure. Well, I think the likes of Coventry changed four or five players before they equalised. 
So I mean, we've got to learn to do our rotation a little bit better. When you know, I know, I know it's 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 one of those things between the <laughs> where you change your team, let a goal in, everyone's blaming Alex Neil for changing the team. If you don't change the team and you let a goal, why well, you should have changed the team and got fresh legs on. So it's a fine balance, but there is five subs you can use. And if we can do what we did in the first 40 minutes, keep that going for almost 90 minutes, there's no reason why we kind of win the game easy enough. All right. Um, so you're <clears> saying <throat> we, we shouldn't be going to Bristol and sitting back and, uh, you know, we, we've got to go at them. Uh, are you saying there are certain teams in this uh, league then that uh, we would, let's say, if we was playing Norwich away or one of the teams who are probably favourites for going up, um, would you say there's certain teams who play that that we should go there and, and sit back. Nah, I'd want to go and compete against every team. I don't think we should fear anybody, you know. I think we should go at every game full of confidence and try and win every single game. I wouldn't be going sitting back against anybody in this league. Not uh, Norwich got beat against Cardiff at the weekend, you know. And, and Burnley only won 1-0. Watford only won 1-0. So there's not much between them all, to be honest. I mean, so I think it comes down to the team. Obviously, got to be good enough first, but then it comes down to the manager instilling sort of the belief in the team and the team working together and, and pulling the socks up and working for actually working for the shirt. You don't want anybody just sort of slacking off. So personally, I wouldn't go back and sit back against anybody in this league. All right. Um, well, what we'll do then, we'll move on to the uh, to the team. Terry, have you got your uh, your whiteboard there? <clears throat> uh, let's see what Terry uh, thinks of the team. Let's just swap that over and we'll stick uh, <clears throat> uh, him in there. I mean, oh, like Terry. I said before, like I said yesterday, it wouldn't bother me one single bit if we played the same team. I haven't got a problem with them playing the same team. But if it was down to me, I'd probably make two substitutes. I'd probably make two changes. I'd bring Roberts on for Embleton. I think Roberts would be more effective in that position. And some people like Luke O'Neill gets a lot of stick. When he comes off the bench, he's a bit rash with his challenges. But someone said to me, and I quite agree with it, Luke O'Neill's better when he starts a game of football than when he comes off the bench for me. So I'd put Luke O'Neill instead of Neil, just to make sure he's a bit more bite in midfield for your first away game of the season. And then if you're doing well in the second half, you can bring on Embleton and Neil, who can all, you know, then can start putting their sort of Bristol City back line under a bit more pressure when it's getting tired. But that's the two changes I would make. Apart from that, I would leave it the same. Okay, um, just uh, I'll quickly pass that round uh, round the other lads then. Um, Jack, do, do you sort of agree with that? Is there, or would you keep the same team, or any anything you change from uh, from Saturday? Uh, Sunday, uh, sorry. It's a bit of a difficult one because I think you know the team that started actually you know played quite well for a large chunk of the game on Sunday. So I know what Terry's saying. Don't there's no real need to make too many changes. Um, I would just maybe drop someone into centre midfield if it is Luke 9 I'm not as, as I've documented on here. I'm not a huge Luke 9 fan, but I do think he has his kind of benefits in certain situations, particularly away from home when we're maybe not going to have as much football as we had in the first half on Sunday. We have to be a little bit more disciplined. Um, Maybe not the right word to use with Luke or nine because sometimes he's a little bit rash. But I think maybe maybe just drop drop another one to midfield so you're playing with kind of three solid holding well not holding but three centre midfielders. Um, and then we've got options off the bench. If I'm, I'm not saying you know wait until we're one nil down, but if if the game isn't going as well as we like and there's not as much kind of creativity, then by all means take maybe bring a couple off the bench and maybe go for it a little bit more, even if it's drawn and we're looking to win the game. It all depends on how the game goes. It's, it's difficult, but I wouldn't make too many changes. I thought for the large chunks of the game on Sunday, we played quite well. Uh, Terry, you was one in there. Yeah, I'm happy to keep exactly the same side as we played against Coventry. But for me, I, I wouldn't start Matetti in the midfield because I watched him the pre-season. He couldn't pass the ball. So that's just my opinion at the moment. I think Matetti's a long way off being championship standard. Uh, right, just very quickly, uh, Steele's McD says, O9 was awful last match. Uh, Thin says, O9 should But he was a substitute. That. He came on as a substitute. And I think, I think I, I don't think, I don't, I wouldn't even put him on as a substitute. I think he comes on, he's rash, he dives in. I think if he starts the game, he's a little bit more level-headed. Uh, right, OK. David, would you keep the same team or, or make any changes? I think the one change I would make is probably start Paddy Roberts from the start. Um, he had a good, he had a good, um, you know, half an hour when he come on on, on Sunday. His energy was there. His pace was there. He was causing them a few problems. Um, so, yeah, I think if I was to make a change, it would probably be um, Paddy Roberts, maybe, probably like Terry said, for, for Um 
Yeah, I mean, I must admit, I, I would like to see uh, Robert start. I do like him as a player. Um, I don't think uh, Ambleton should be getting all this, uh, well, he's, bits of stick he's had this week. You know, you can have a bad game. Uh, Ambleton's normally a, a pretty good player for his. He normally, uh, he normally delivers. Just I'm sort of uh, had a bad game on Sunday. Uh, just very quickly then, because we are out of time now. Uh, we'll take some predictions from you. Uh, Terry, we've already seen yours, but tell us anyway. Uh, you're on mute, by the way, which is preferred for some people. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. Uh, one nil to Sunderland is what he said. Uh, uh, <coughs> Jack, um, prediction from you? Uh, I think it'll be 1-1. One, one. I'd love to think we're going to go there and win, but I think a point, you know, I don't think it's too bad a result. I know what fans are saying, we'd like to try and win games, but I think a, probably, in my opinion, a better opportunity to definitely get the first win would be QPR at home the week after. So I think I think we'll we'll, we'll play out a 1-1 one, one draw. Uh, right, OK. Are you going down, Jack? I am, yes. Yeah, six o'clock, the bus is going early on Saturday morning, so nice early start. Fantastic. Uh, Terry Quilly? Quickly for all of you, I just want to say, was, would anyone like to see Sims come on for the last 20 minutes on Saturday? Absolutely, 100%. 100%. Uh, I think you should as well. Um, David, prediction from you? I agree with Jack. I think it would be 1-1. I'd love to keep a clean sheet. Um, I think it would be massive for the lads if we do keep a clean sheet, but I just kind of see it um, on Saturday. I think we'll concede early um, and get back into it. So I'll say 1-1. Uh, right, OK. Um, somebody on here said, uh, oh, Craig Scott, our attacking players are championship quality. And, uh, yeah, I could pretty much uh, sort of agree with that. And, I'm, uh, I mean, I, I was spawn with last week's uh, prediction of 1-1. So I'll be spawn again this week. I'm going to go Bristol City 1, Sunderland 2. I'm going to go for it, I think. I do think they're a team that we should be beating. As I know I used to don't agree with it, but that's where we're at. Uh, no, right. I think we. I, know, I think we should be. I want to beat them, and I think. Well, yeah, why not? We should be beating them, but I wouldn't expect to beat them. Uh, right. Okay. Um, look, that just about wraps it up from us uh, this week. Uh, thanks for for tuning in. Thanks for for joining us, uh, David. Uh, thanks for coming along. Your first one. Uh, do you want to just say bye to everybody? Thank you. Thanks for having us. Bye. Not a, not a problem. Uh, Jack, just say bye to everybody, will you? See you later, lads and masses. And uh, Terry? Adios. Adios. There you go. Uh, don't forget, please, to like, uh, share and subscribe. And if you are a member of the channel, just remember, uh, you can see your name in the credits at the end as it goes <coughs> on. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the Sunday Bunch on Sunday. Thanks very much. Uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye.